Hello coders, I welcome you all. In this video, we are going to perform EDA, exploratory data analysis, like univariate analysis, bivariate analysis, and multivariate analysis on real world data set available on Kaggle. You can download this data set from Kaggle or from my GitHub account. Link is given in the description of this video. The main purpose of this EDA is that after this EDA, you can perform basic EDA on any other data set. So let's get started. To perform EDA, exploratory data analysis, here I have mentioned some questions that you can see over here. So now let's solve them one by one. So for that, let me first import pandas as PD. For data visualization, let me import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. Also, we are going to use Seaborn for data visualization. So let me import Seaborn as SNS. Let me execute this cell. As you can see here, now our required libraries are successfully imported. So now let's load our data set as pandas data frame. So for that, let me write pd dot read underscore CSV because our data set is available in CSV file format with name supermarket underscore cells hyphen sip one dot XLS. And let me assign it to one variable. Data is equal to this statement. Let me execute this cell. As you can see here, now our data set is successfully imported as pandas data frame that you can see over here. So during our ADA, our code may generate different warnings. So now let's disable all the warnings. So for that, we have to import warnings. Let me execute this cell and let me write warnings dot filter warnings. And here we have to pass ignore. Let me execute this cell. Now our warnings will be ignored that you can see over here. So this way we can ignore warnings. So now let's solve our questions one by one. So now our first question. In this question, we have to display top five rows of the data set. So for that, we have to write data which is pointing to our data frame here. And we have to use head method of pandas data frame. Let me execute this cell. So by default, head method is displaying top five rows of our data set that you can see over here. So these many columns are available in our data set like invoice ID, branch, city, customer type, gender, product line, unit price, quantity, text, 5%, total date time payment co gs cost of goods sold gross margin percentage gross income and rating so these many columns are available in our data set as you can see here some of the columns are numerical and some of the columns are categorical that you can see over here and in our data set also we are having date time column that you can see over here so if you want to know what these columns represent then you can refer this cell first column invoice ID that you can see over here invoice ID branch city customer type gender likewise. So this first column invoice ID represents computer generated cell slip invoice identification number branch branch of super center three branches are available identified by a B and C next column is city location of super centers. So next column is customer type type of customers recorded by members for customers using member card and normal for without member card gender gender type of customer next column is product line which represents general item categorization groups like electronic accessories fashion accessories etc next column is unit price price of each product in dollar quantity number of products purchased by customer next column is text represents 5% tax fee for customer by next is total total price including text date column date of purchase record available from January 2019 to March 2019 next column is time represents purchase time 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. next column is payment payment used by customer for purchase here three methods are available cash credit card and e wallet next is COGS cost of goods sold next column is gross margin percentage another column is gross income and our final column is rating customer stratification rating for their overall shopping experience which is available on a scale of 1 to 10 so these are our columns that you can see over here and this way we can display top five rows of our data set using head method of pandas data frame now our next question 
in this question we have to display last five rows of the data set so for that we have to write data and we have to use tail method of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see here by default tail method is displaying last five rows of the data set that you can see over here by that we can able to know total how many rows are available in this data set that you can see over here so this way we can display last five rows of the data set using tail method of pandas data frame now our next question in this question we have to print random five rows from our data set as you can see here head method is displaying top five rows of our data set in sequence that you can see over here zero to four same over here tail method is displaying last five rows of our data set in sequence that you can see over here last five rows so sometimes we require to check random five rows from our data set so for that we can use sample method of pandas data frame here you can pass number of rows that you want to display let me pass five let me execute this cell as you can see here now it is displaying random five rows from our data set that you can see over here let me execute this cell once again at every run it will display random five rows from our data set that you can see over here let me execute this cell once again as you can see over here so this way we can check random five rows from our data set using sample method of pandas data frame that you can see over here now our next question in this question we have to find shape of our data set means number of rows and number of columns available in our data set so for that we have to use shape attribute of pandas data frame please remember shape is not a method it is an attribute of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see here output is python tuple this is at index 0 and this is at index 1 let me display it in proper format so for that we have to use print function of python and here let me write number of columns data dot shape index 0 and print number of rows data dot shape index 1 let me execute this cell as you can see here in our data set we are having this many columns 1000 and in our data set we are having this many rows 70 so this way we can find shape of our data set means number of rows and number of columns available in our data set using shape attribute of pandas data frame so now our next question here we have to check for null values in the data set so for that let me write data and we have to use is null method of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see here output is pandas data frame with boolean values and let me perform sum of true values let me execute this cell as you can see here output is 0 0 and 0 means we do not have any null value in our data set that you can see over here so this way we can check for null values in the data set that you can see over here so now our next question in this question we have to get information about our data set like total number of rows total number of columns data types of each column and memory requirement that we can do with just one method info method of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see here range index 1000 entries means total we are having this many rows with this indexes and total we are having this many columns as you can see here column names non-null count means this many non-null values are available in this particular column this many non-null values are available in this particular column likewise as you can see here d type data type for each and every columns that you can see over here the important column is date that you can see over here having object data type so if we want to work with this date column then we have to convert the data type from object to date time then pandas will treat this column as a date time column so for that here we can pass one argument parse underscore dates and here we can pass column that we want to treat as date time in our case column name is date that you can see over here let me execute this cell and let me execute this cell once again as you can see here now our date column data type is converted into date time so now we can work on this column date so now let me back as you can see here d type data type for each and every columns that you can see over here d types colon in our data set one column with date time data type seven columns with floating point data type one column with integer data type eight columns with object data type and here you can see memory usage for our data set 
so this way we can get information about our data set like total number of rows total number of columns data types of each column and memory requirement using info method of pandas data frame so now our next question in this question we have to get overall statistics about our data set so for that we have to write data and we have to use describe method of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see here by default this describe method is displaying statistics only for numerical columns that you can see here let me take this column unit price count in this column unit price average value in this unit price standard deviation of this unit price minimum value in this unit price and these are percentile values 25 percent 50 percent and 75 percent means in unit price column 25 percent values are below 32 in this unit price column 50% values are below 55 in this unit price column 75% values are below 77 and this is the maximum value available in this unit price column same for other columns that you can see here so this way we can get overall statistics about our data set using describe method of pandas data frame that you can see over here so now our next question from this question we are going to perform univariate analysis bivariate analysis and multivariate analysis so before we start data analysis we have to know data type of available columns means our column contains numerical values or our column contains categorical values because we have to use different plot for numerical values and different plot for categorical values means we have to handle numerical and categorical columns differently so now let's first differentiate categorical and numerical columns so for that let me create two empty list in one list we will store categorical columns in one list we will store numerical columns and let me write for column in data dot columns so if data column dot and unique it will find unique values available in this particular column here I am taking if greater than 10 then we are considering that particular column as numerical column so let me append that particular column into numerical list else let me append into categorical list let me execute this cell let me check as you can see here in our data set these many columns are categorical columns and these many columns are numerical columns that you can see over here so now let's perform univariate analysis what is univariate analysis uni means one variate means variable variable means column in univariate analysis we are taking one variable means one column at a time and perform our analysis without considering relationships with other variables so here we perform our analysis without considering relationships with other columns so that's why it is called as univariate analysis now our first question in univariate analysis here we have to find aggregate cells among branches as you can see here this branch column contains categorical values so we are considering this column as a categorical column so please remember first plot we can use on categorical column is count plot of seaborn or bar plot of pandas let me show you this so for that let me sns dot count plot and let me pass column a branch let me execute this cell as you can see over here our count plot which shows frequencies of categorical values in this particular column branch a occurs this many time c occurs this many time b occurs this many time in this particular column so this way we can use count plot so from this count plot we can see that there is no much difference in cells across the three branches a B or C the cells in branch a is a bit higher than the rest of two branches that you can see over here so this way we can perform univariate analysis on categorical columns so if you want some information in percentage then we can use pi plot on categorical columns let me show you this so for that let me write data and our column name branch and let me use value counts method as you can see here a occurs this many time b occurs this many time c occurs this many time and here we can use plot and kind you can use bar plot but we want to display information in percentage so let me use pi plot and here we have to pass another parameter auto pc 
50 and here let me write percentage 1.2 f and i want to display percentage as well so we want two decimal points after period so that's why here i have used 0.2 f let me execute this cell as you can see here values in percentage that you can see over here so this way we can find aggregate cells among branches which is categorical column that you can see over here as i say also we can use bar plot let me show you this let me remove this and here let me write kind is equal to bar as you can see over here bar plot same as discount plot so this way we can find aggregate cells among branches which is categorical column so we can use c1 c count plot if we want values in percentage then we can use pie plot and also we can use bar plot that you can see over here so now our next question so in this question we have to find the most popular method used by customers and again this is categorical column that you can see over here in our list payment now to save our recording time let me copy this statement and let me paste it over here and here we have to work on payment column and again this is categorical column so we can use bar plot let me execute this cell as you can see here different payment methods like e-wallet cash and credit card so from this bar plot we can see that the most popular payment method is e-wallet that you can see over here and the next one is cash customers are using cash in place of credit card that you can see over here so this way we can find most popular method used by customers and this is categorical column that you can see over here so now our next question in this question we have to find the distribution of ratings and which is numerical column so we can use c ones list plot or histogram let me show you this so let me display our numerical columns as you can see here rating is numerical column so for that let me write sns dot list plot and here let me pass our rating column let me copy this and let me paste it over here let me execute this cell as you can see here so please remember we can use this this plot to check distribution of our data and also we can check skewness of our data so we can see that the distribution of rating is normal we can't see skewness in the distribution that you can see over here to find skewness we can use pandas skew method let me show you this so let me write data and rating and skew let me execute this cell as you can see here skewness is almost zero so we can say the distribution of rating is normal also you can see from this graph normal distribution of our rating column so this way we can find distribution of customer ratings which is numerical column so now our next question here we have to find distribution of cost of goods sold and which is numerical column so we can use this plot also we can use box plot let me first use this plot then we will use box plot here we have to pass cogs column let me execute this cell as you can see here our disk plot and also we can see that this cogs is right skew also we can find this skewness value using pandas let me show you this so data cogs and we can use this skew method as you can see here output is positive value so if skewness value is positive means data is right skewed if value is negative means data is left skewed if zero means our data is normally distributed so this way we can find skewness from this plot we can see that cost of goods sold is right skewed that you can see over here and this curve which is touching to our histogram which is called as kde kernel density estimation which is showing probability of particular value as you can see here let me take this 400 and probability of 400 is 0.10 percent so this way we can use this kernel density estimation to find probability of particular value so for numerical columns we can use this this plot also we can use histogram or box plot so now let's use box plot so for that let me write sns dot box plot and here let's pass our column cogs cost of goods sold let me execute this cell as you can see over here our box plot so this plot gives five variable summary this is q1 this is q2 and this is q3 
this is also called as median middle value so this is our middle value which is called as a median and this is minimum value and this is maximum value so this way box plot gives us five variable summary q1 q2 q3 minimum and maximum value so minimum value is the minimum value available in this particular column maximum value maximum value available in this particular column cogs and this median is the center point also called as second quartile of the data q1 is the first quartile of the data so we can say that 25 percent values are lies between minimum and first quartile q1 and this q3 is the third quartile of the data so we can see that 75 percent values lies between minimum and this third quartile in simple term we can say that 25 percent values are below q1 value and 75 percent values are below this q3 value so the difference between this q3 and q1 is called as iqr interquartile range that we can find by q3 minus q1 which is called as interquartile range so this is one of the method for outlier detection so for that we have to define a new range lower bound and upper bound lower bound is equal to q1 minus 1.5 iqr and upper bound is equal to q3 plus 1.5 into iqr so if any data point less than lower bound or more than upper bound is considered as an outliers that you can see over here we do not have any outliers here which are less than lower bound we are having some points more than upper bound so we can consider these points as potential outliers but further analysis is required before you drop it so this way we can find outliers using this box plot so as you can see here this way we can use this plot and box plot for univariate analysis on numerical column that you can see over here so now our next question from this question we are going to perform bivariate and multivariate analysis what is bivariate analysis in bivariate analysis we are taking two variables at a time and perform our analysis to determine the relationships between them in multivariate analysis we are taking more than two variables at a time and perform our analysis to determine relationships between them so let's get started in bivariate and multivariate analysis the first question is does the cost of goods sold affect the ratings that the customers provide and both are numerical columns that you can see over here our categorical columns and numerical columns that you can see over here cogs and rating both are numerical columns so for that we can use c bonds scatter plot and here let me pass cost of good sold column and rating column let me execute this cell as you can see here our scatter plot from this scatter plot we can see that there is no any relationship between cost of goods sold and ratings that you can see over here so this way we can use scatter plot for two numerical columns that you can see over here to find relationship between them so now our next question in this question we have to check does gross income affect the ratings that the customers provide and again both are numerical columns so again we can use c bonds scatter plot and let me pass here gross income on x axis and on y axis let me pass rating let me execute this cell as you can see here gross income on x axis and rating on y axis again here from the scatter plot we can see that there is no any relationship between gross income and rating that you can see over here so this way we can find relationship between two numerical columns gross income and rating that you can see over here so now our next question so in this question we have to find the most profitable branch as per gross income here one column is numerical column and one column is categorical column let me check as you can see here our categorical columns list branch column because we have to use branch which is categorical column and gross income this one which is numerical column so here one column is categorical column and another column is numerical column so we can use bar plot so for that let me use c bonds bar plot and on x axis 
let me pass this branch column which is categorical column on y axis let me pass gross income which is numerical column let me execute this cell as you can see here branch on x axis which is categorical column and gross income which is numerical column so from this bar plot we can see that branch c has a slightly higher income than a or b that you can see over here so this way we can use bar plot if we are having one categorical column and one numerical column that you can see over here so this way we can find the most profitable branch as per gross income that you can see over here so let me show you how to perform multivariate analysis so let me copy this statement and let me paste it over here and let me pass here third column city let me execute this cell as you can see here so here you can see we are using three variables means three columns branch gross income and city so this is called as multivariate analysis so actually our data set consists of data from three cities or three branches in Myanmar that you can see over here three cities in three branches a b and c so these cities are Yangon, Naypyidaw, and Mandali that you can see over here. So here, branch A is in Yangon, branch C is in Naypyidaw, and branch B is in Mandali that you can see over here. So we can see that branch C, which is in Naypyidaw, has slightly higher income than other two branches that you can see over here. So this way we can perform bivariate analysis, and this way we can perform multivariate analysis that you can see over here so now our next question so in this question we have to find is there any relationship between gender and gross income again here one column is numerical which is gross income and other column is categorical this gender column so if you want to perform bivariate analysis if one column is numerical and another column is categorical we can use this bar plot also we can use box plot. so let me use c bonds box plot this time on x axis let me pass this gender column on y axis let me pass gross income which is numerical column let me execute this cell as you can see here our box plot on x axis gender column on y axis gross income that you can see over here so from this box plot we can see that gross income is similar in both male and female but female customers spend a bit higher that you can see over here so now let's perform multivariate analysis here so for that let me copy this statement and let me paste it over here and again let me use this hue parameter and here let me pass customer type column let me execute this set as you can see here in our data set two customer types one is member and one is normal so as i say gross income is similar for both male and female female customers spend a bit higher as compared to male right so we have added this customer type so we can see that customers which are members contributing higher in gross income as compared to normal customers that you can see over here from this box plot so this way we can perform multivariate analysis and this way we can perform bivariate analysis if we are having one numerical column and one categorical column that you can see over here so now our next question in this question we have to find the product line that generates the most income here again we are taking one numerical column and one categorical column let me first display column names to know actually we have to work on which column so let me use c bonds bar plot on x axis let me pass this column product line because as per our question we have to find product line that generates the most income on y axis let me pass this gross income let me copy this column name let me paste it over here let me execute this cell as you can see here product line names are overlapping so for that let me rotate these labels so i'm using matplotlib means plt dot x picks and let me use rotation is equal to 60 let me execute this cell Let me use 80 and to remove this extra information, let me use plt.show. 
let me execute this cell now it looks good so from this bar plot we can see that gross income is highest in home and lifestyle that you can see over here and the second highest in sports and travel that you can see over here and this way we can find the product line that generates the most income that you can see over here so now our next question in this question we have to find the highest unit price in the product line again here we are using one numerical column and one categorical column so again we can use bar plot to save our recording time let me copy this statement and let me paste it over here i am keeping this column product line on x axis as it is but here we have to use unit price column let me execute this cell as you can see here again here some overlapping so again let me copy this statements and let me paste it over here let me execute this cell once again as you can see here unit price is highest in sports and travel that you can see here so this way we can find the highest unit price in the product line here one variable is numerical means one column is numerical and one column is categorical that you can see over here so now our next question in this question we have to find different payment methods used by customers city wise here we are taking both categorical columns that you can see over here one column is city again which is categorical column and payment methods which is again categorical so for that let me first use cross tab and here let me pass city column and payment column let me execute this cell as you can see here in ct mainly most of the customers are using e wallet payment method and netito customers are using cash payment method yengon customers are using e wallet payment method that you can see over here so we can plot this using heat map so let me use c bonds heat map let me execute this cell as you can see here lighter values are higher values then this dark values that you can see here as you can see here maybe two customers are using cash payment method as you can see here which is in lighter color here yangon customers are using e wallet payment method that you can see over here again which is in lighter color and manly customers are using e wallet payment method that you can see over here so this way we can check relationships between two categorical columns that you can see over here so now our next question in this question we have to find which product line is purchased in the highest quantity so here we can use bar plot let me show you this so let me write data dot group by group by product line and i am going to perform sum of quantity let me execute this cell as you can see here so let's visualize this so let me put this statement into parenthesis and let me write dot plot kind bar plot let me execute this cell as you can see here our bar plot so from this bar plot we can see that electronic accessories are purchased in the highest quantity that you can see over here so this way we can find which product line is purchased in the highest quantity that you can see over here so now our next question in this question we have to display daily sales by day of the week so let me display column names so we have to work on this day column so we have already passed this column that you can see over here pars underscore dates this date column so we can use this column as a date time column so now let me write data and let me use day column so as per our question we have to find day of the week so from this date column we have to fetch day of the week so for that let me write dot dt dot day of week let me execute this cell as you can see here day of week contains numerical values here zero means monday and six means sunday so let me map zero to monday and six to sunday so for that let me create python dictionary so here zero means monday one means tuesday two means Wednesday, three means Thursday, four means Friday, five means Saturday, and six means Sunday. And here, let me use 
dot map and we have to pass this python dictionary over here let me execute this cell and let me execute this cell as well as you can see here so but as per our question we have to find daily cells by day of the week so let me create new column from this and let me give name day underscore of underscore week is equal to this statement let me execute this cell let me check as you can see here new column has been created with name day underscore of underscore week and on this particular column let me use value underscore counts method as you know this is categorical column so let me use dot plot and kind path plot let me execute this step. as you can see here from this bar plot we can see that as you can see here sales is highest on saturday because it is weekends and interestingly second highest is on tuesday that you can see over here and the sales is lowest on monday because it is start of the working week that you can see over here so this way we can display daily sales by the day of the week that you can see over here so now our next question here we have to find what will be the highest months for the cells so now here we have fetched day of the week from this day column but here as per our question we have to fetch month from this day column to save our recording time let me copy this and let me paste low here so in place of day of week here we have to fetch month and let me create mapping for month let me copy this let me paste it over here and let me create python dictionary here one means january two means february three means march let me execute this cell and let me create new column with name month let me execute this cell let me check as you can see here new column is created with name month again we have to use value counts method and as you know this is categorical column so we can use bar plot let me execute this cell as you can see here from this bar plot we can see that sales is highest on january month that you can see over here so this way we can perform exploratory data analysis on our data set like univariate analysis bivariate analysis and multivariate analysis that you can see over here hope you like this video please don't forget to subscribe this channel if you like this video press that like button thank you very much for watching this video take care bye bye see you in the next video